What's up, everybody? Welcome to Buzzworthy TV. And I'm your girl, Lady T. And today we are talking Hollywood divas, y'all. So let's get into it. The episode picks back up where we left off with Elise joining the girls on the John Joyner Fantastic Voyage cruise. And the girls waste no time bringing up the wife sisters. I don't even know why we still talking about this. This shit ain't going no freaking where. I don't understand. Because when I saw the trailer at the end of their reunion last season, I knew it wasn't going nowhere then. So I don't know why we still talking about it. What is it going? Straight to YouTube? Like Kenya Moore's as the, uh, as the World Twirls or whatever that crap is called? It, it, it must be going to straight to YouTube or whatever because other than that, it's not going nowhere. So to me, this conversation is irrelevant and it's stupid. But I guess they need some type of storyline. So whatever, however. So anyway, just thinking about it, it's exhausting me, y'all. So excuse me. So anyway, Golden says to Elise, like, hey, when we went to get our nails done, you made it seem like Paula was throwing you under the bus, when in actuality, you did bring in a producer, and you did have something to do with this. And she was like, that's not what I'm saying. Elise is like, I'm not saying I didn't bring in the, I didn't bring in the investor or whatever, but... That's their project. That's why I said it came from Zim. I'm not saying that I didn't bring in an investor, but it's her or her husband's project. That's all I'm saying. And in the midst of all this, oh my goodness, crocodile teeth start crying crocodile tears. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm talking about Paula. She start boo-hooing and crap. And they're like, what you crying for? And I'm sitting up here thinking the same thing. Paula. What the hell are you crying for? So, she's crying because she just feels as though, you know, Elise is trying to make her out to be the bad guy and that they're supposed to be friends. And Elise is like, look, I am your friend, but I don't miss business with pleasure. What they're talking about right now is business. And she's like, but wait a minute. I have to feel comfortable in all areas. I wouldn't go into business with you if we weren't friends, so I can't keep it separate and all this other stuff. And I was like, oh, my God. Paula in the dramatics. So, anyway... You know, the whole crying thing just threw everybody off. So they kind of dropped the subject. And, you know, Elise, you know, kind of plays with her and give her a hug or whatever. They got the weirdest relationship ever. I don't know. Then Countess. Oh, my God. Now, I understand Countess is not on the cruise with the girls. So, of course, she don't get as much film time. And I appreciate that they still give her film time. But what the hell she filmed is just like, what? Okay. So, she's at home with her bed. You know, she done put the kids to bed. And she in her whole little lingerie. And she feels the need to let us know that her and her man, they do role playing. He's the deacon. And she's the first lady. I'm like, Tim, I count this. I'm so glad that you feel yourself and you much, con you much more confident. But I don't need to see all that. All that, you know... What well, goes but on behind closed doors should stay behind closed doors. You could be confident without all this extra mess. Anyway, then we go back to Golden and Elise because Golden is feeling some type of way. So she goes to Elise's room and she asks Elise, look, what's really going on? Because I feel like there's two different stories and I feel like out of everybody, me and you are the coolest. So what's going on? She was like, why do you keep asking me this? I told you what's going on. And she's like, yeah, but there's two different stories. And she was like, but if we're supposed to be cool, why are you listening to them? And she's like, look, I just want to know that you're not trying to cut me out because we are cool. And let me pop my collar. Okay, let's get that together. Anyway, so she's like, look, even if it was some sort of side deal or something going on of that nature, don't you think by you being my girl, I would have told you? So why are we even going through all this? And so Golden is feeling 
a little bit more sure, but she's still not convinced. But she gonna drop the she gonna drop the subject for right now. Like I said, I don't even know why we still talking about the white sisters. But whatever. Anyway, then we got the girls, they get together for drinks and whatever. And everybody, I guess, call themselves get dressed up for drinks. Look, these weaves is on struggle, okay? They makeup is on struggle. They clothes are on struggle. I don't understand, especially Star Jackson. Like, Star, to me, you are so pretty. But your hair always looking like nappy. Like, not, I don't know if that's a weave or is that your hair. But however the case, it don't look properly blended together. And Elise, you look like the cowardly lion with your blonde hair. And everybody, uh, I, I love Paula. She she doing all right with her makeup this year, but it seemed like without her makeup, she looked, you know, like she been on a week long drug binge. Um, I, I just can't take it. Uh, who else we got that's on there? They all look a mess, and they supposed to be good dressed up and going off for drinks. But I was just like, Lord, fix it, Jesus, as Phaedra say. So anyway, they get together for dinner. I mean, not dinner, but drinks. And they decided that they all just want to turn up. They tired of talking about the white sisters. I'm glad y'all said that because we tired of hearing about it. And, you know, they, they laugh and talk about Paula and Elise because of what happened when, you know, Elise first got on the boat. And how, you know, Paula just started crying and all that stuff. So anyway, the girls decide, like I said, to turn up or whatever. And... They go hear this guy sing, and this guy starts flirting with Elise or whatever, and everybody laughing like, he better be careful, at least like him young. But like Elise said, he ain't really her type. He ain't feeling them. And she don't need nobody help to get him because if she was feeling them, she would have got him. Whatever. Anyway, then we got Golden and Lisa. They are, um, it's the next day, and they are getting together sitting by the um, pool. They in the, actually in the jacuzzi. So it's the next day, like I said, they in the jacuzzi. And basically, Golda is telling Lisa, like, sh the way she thought that Char put together the actor's workshop was scantless and tacky and that she going to do it the right way. And Lisa was like, well... Yeah, I kind of felt left out. But Golda is just like Team Lisa all of a sudden. Like, all that shit that happened last year don't matter. She Team Lisa right now. And she was offended for Lisa how Char handled, you know, the writer's workshop. And like I said, she said that she is going to, you know, do it on a more professional level. But while they're talking at the jacuzzi, we got... Elise and Char just laying out in the sun, and Char tells Elise, like, you know, why, you know, before you got on here, we did an actor's workshop, and I left, you know, Lisa off the fire because I know everybody else's work, but I didn't know her work, and it wasn't to be malicious or anything like that, and Elise is like, well, I understand where you were coming from because, you know, you weren't familiar with her work, but here's my thing, I kind of get it was an actor's workshop, but now it's this little blurred line with you know, with reality TV coming into play, where you could have put her picture on there. You could have just said, you know, Lisa Wu from Atlanta Housewives, and they would have knew. They would have knew instantly who she was. I mean, like I said, reality TV is very prevalent. Reality stars and actors right now are going up for the same roles and stuff. So until you can acknowledge that. You know, you're just going to come off as grimy, Char. I'm sorry. So that might not have been your intention, but that's just what it is. It has nothing to do with you, but it's just the world we live in right now. With social media, with the impact of reality TV, it just is what it is. So anyway, then we got the workshop that Golden has coordinated and let me tell y'all her workshop was filled with shade she had everybody's byline and she was shade everybody she gonna say we got miss elise neal here isn't she beautiful and talented 
That just shows that talent knows no age. I'm like, damn, she just called that that bitch old. Like, wow, okay. And then, you know, she said that here's Char, you know, who's made nothing out of something and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, wow, you talk about how Char... You know how she was being unprofessional and how what she did was grimy. But you having them people come up here and throw in that shade for everybody to see and put them on display was a thousand times more shady than what Char did. Like, you just had them sit up there and you just threw complete shade at them and for everybody to laugh. Like, you just had them sitting up there and I just couldn't believe it. Like... They all stood up there on the stage, and you just throwing just so much shade in front of all these people. Like, you just make them the laughing stocks, Golden. So, you need to sit down, because what you did was just totally wrong. You can't never talk about Char, ever. And so, then the girls, the girls arrive in Jamaica after the workshop. And, you know, everybody's excited, especially Paula, because, you know, she likes to smoke weed, so... She is ready. She ready to get a hold of some weed and just get on the island and puff, puff, pass and all that. So, you know, they have somebody show up the island and, you know, they all doing this little dance circle and everything. Everybody's having a good time. And after that, they decide to go shopping on the island. So, Paula and Elise... They kind of veer off into their own thing because Elise wanted to talk to Paula. And Elise just basically lets her know, like, look, hey, I love you. You know, we have known each other the longest out of everybody in the group. And, you know, don't you ever forget that. And basically, you know, Paula said, yeah, I know, and I do feel like our dynamic has changed because, you know, I'm married now, I got a kid, and we're not as close as we were once were back in the day. And I want to fix that. So they decide that they go, you know, keep in contact more and make more of an effort to, you know, rebuild their friendship. Because I guess they really were close during the hustle and flow days. I don't know. So while they talking, we got Char, Lisa, and Golden. And they are talking about how basically, you know, Golden, um, wait, how Elise had through shade and all the girls. Because when they were doing their Q&A, what someone stood up and asked Elise, do she regret having children? And she said, no, because if I couldn't do it the right way, I had made that decision I wasn't going to have children. And so Golden was like I said, talking to Charlisa, it was like, I feel like that is a slap in the face to all single mothers everywhere because what is the right way? Everybody makes their own choices. Everybody has a situation. So maybe that's not right for you, but don't throw shade for all the other single mothers and, because for them, that was right for them. And, you know, they agree with her or whatever. And so, after the girls get back on the boat, they come back from Jamaica or whatever, they're back on the boat, they decided to have dinner because it's their last night on the cruise. And, basically, you know, everybody's talking about how they enjoyed themselves and despite, you know, the bumps in the road or whatever, that they've truly become minded. And, God is like, yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That's all well and good, but, I want to talk about the comment that you made, Elise, about how, you know, you if you could have children the right way, that you wasn't going to have any. And she was like, well, they asked me my perspective. That's to get single mothers. But for me, I had made a decision not to have kids. I went through several steps. I've taken birth control and everything. Even when I was engaged, was, I was still on birth control because I made that decision because of my upbringing that I'm not going to have children. Me, myself, that's against nobody else. And Golden was like, okay, I get that. But the way you made the sound, the way you made it present is that you were throwing shade to all the single mothers out there and I take offense because that's your decision and no shade to your decision but you just really made it seem like anybody who decides to be a single mother you know it's something wrong with that she said and while we're at it you just might as well just be honest if you were to get pregnant 
you will have your baby and you will be just like us, single, a single mother. So just don't just say, you know, you decided not to have a baby. Just say that it didn't work out for you. Just say that, you know, you just weren't blessed right now to have a baby. But don't just throw everybody under the bus. And Elise was like, no, I'm not going to say that because the, I made sacrifices that I made. I took precautions to make sure I would not have a baby. So I'm not just going to say it didn't work for me because I took precautions so that I would have a baby. It's not that I couldn't. So anyway, you know, it gets heated. Everybody's like, you know what, let's just drop it and let's just leave it at the table. And they decide to leave it at the table, but you could already tell that it is already some underlying tension now because of what just transpired. But anyway, y'all, that was the episode. Like I said, it was good, but it didn't really give me life. But like I said, I love Hollywood Divas. I'm there for Hollywood Divas. So until next time, y'all, peace and love. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye.